Hey everyone, Thomas here. Welcome to Bintel's July edition of What's in the Sky, where we take a look at the best things to see overhead this month from right here in the Southern Hemisphere. It's July, which means winter's fully settled in, and that's great news for stargazing. We've now got longer nights, steadier air, and a sky packed with things to look for. In this episode, we're diving into five planets you can spot this month, including one that's often hard to catch, plus a standout lunar feature and, of course, some amazing deep sky targets later on. So if you've been wondering what's up there right now, or just want to know what to point your telescope at next, let's get right into it. First up is Mercury. This one doesn't show up often, and if you missed it earlier in the year, July gives you another shot. Mercury's hugging the western horizon just after sunset, and while it doesn't climb high due to its proximity to the sun, this is actually one of the best chances we get to see it clearly this year. Grab your binoculars or a telescope and be ready to look just after sunset and see if you can spot its tiny crescent shape low in the evening sky. It can be a bit tough to spot Mercury through the evening glow, as it's close to the horizon, so our tip is to make sure you've got a clear view west with no trees or buildings in the way. You can start to observe Mercury as soon as the sun sets, typically from 5pm, and you'll be able to see it every day during the first two weeks of this month. Though Mercury will be at its greatest separation from the sun and at its highest in the sky on the 8th. Next up is Mars. If you've watched one of our recent guides, you'll know we've been keeping tabs on Mars as it slowly drifts lower each evening. It's still just about visible in the western sky just after sunset, right near Mercury. And while again there's still not much surface detail to be spotted at the moment, it's still worth a look. Seeing that soft red glow of your own eyes is often a classic stargazing moment, especially if you're just starting out. Your best window to see Mars is around 5.30 to 6pm, and it's reasonably well visible throughout the month. Our next planet is Saturn. Saturn's been creeping higher in the early mornings over the past few months, and in July, it's really starting to get in a great position for telescopes. But you might need to get up early or stay up late to observe it. If you've been waiting for a clear view of rings, now's a good time. They're still nicely tilted, but won't stay that way for much longer, as in later in the year, they'll go back to being edge on. This is a planet we've mentioned before, but the views keep improving each week. And if this is your first time tuning in, Saturn never disappoints. Saturn will be visible in the sky from around midnight onwards, but if you're after the best views, aim for 4 a.m. when it's at its highest point in the sky. And now Neptune. Like last month, Neptune's still a tough target as it's only visible late at night, but it's doable if you're keen. Even if all you'll be seeing is not much more than a tiny blue dot, just spotting it is a quiet kind of thrill. It's a great object to observe if you're already up to observe Saturn, though it may be not worth waking up for just for this. Like Saturn, Neptune will be visible from around midnight onwards but the best views will be had around 4am, when it will be at its highest point in the sky at almost the same time as Saturn. And finally, Venus. This is your real last chance to catch it as the morning star before it slips away behind the sun. We've been following its journey for a while now, but in July it's now low on the horizon just before sunrise. If you've got a telescope, you'll notice it has a distinct gibbous phase, almost like a miniature moon. It's a lovely sight and a fitting send off until it reappears in the evening sky later this year. You'll want to be out there from around 5.30 a.m. and early in the month before it sinks too low to spot. And now the moon. The moon is always an incredible target and this July is no exception. You'll find it higher in the sky between 6 and 10 p.m. for the first half of the month, with the full moon occurring on the 10th. This period near the beginning of the month, not when it's full, but the week before is actually the best time to observe the moon. That's when the sunlight hits the surface at an angle and they cast deep shadows across the craters and ridges, bringing the landscape to life. If you're looking for a target, try the Gassendi Crater on July 7th. It's a 110 km wide impact site with fractures and mountains inside the rim, and it looks amazing through both binoculars or a telescope. Later in the month, the moon sets earlier and gets out of the way, making it perfect time to be chasing deep sky targets. Hey guys, Ash here, and if you're into deep sky observing, July's a great time to get outside and see what's up. Our first stop is Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to our own. 
It's the third brightest star in the night sky, and it's a deep sky object that's just as beautiful to look at as it is fascinating to think about. To the naked eye, it looks like a single bright golden star near the Southern Cross. But if you've got a telescope, even a small one, you'll be able to split it into two stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, a beautiful golden pair orbiting each other. This is a great object for visual observers and especially rewarding if you've never split a binary star before. We recommend a telescope with at least 80 millimeters of aperture and around 100 times magnification, but we've heard of people managing it with less. And lastly, while you won't be able to see it with your naked eye, the system also includes Proxima Centauri, the closest star to the sun. If you've got a smart telescope, check out our guide in the description below where we give you the exact coordinates to point your scope at to image our closest stellar neighbor. Alpha Centauri can be found as a very bright star near the constellation Crux, that's the Southern Cross, and is best observed between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m. Now for something dramatic, the Fighting Dragons of Era, NGC 6188. While not a great visual target, this is one of the most striking astrophotography targets in the southern sky. Through a camera, you'll see two towering clouds of glowing hydrogen gas that really do look like dragons mid-battle. Rarely do deep sky objects in our hobby live up to their name as well as this one. Use a dual band or narrow band filter if you've got one, and try to get at least two to three hours of exposure time if you can. But, and the dragons should become clearly visible in as little as 15 to 20 minutes. Smart telescope users, this is a great one. Just make sure to check your field of view. If it's too big for your scope, try the nearby NGC 6164 instead, also known as the Dragon's Egg, a smaller nebula centered around a nearby star. You'll find the fighting dragons of Era, well, of course, in the constellation Era. It's visible from 6 p.m. onwards, but best observed between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. Sticking with the deep red nebula theme, it's time for the Prawn Nebula, IC4628. Yep, the Prawn Nebula. Odd name, incredible target. This star-forming region glows deep red thanks to the young stars lighting up the surrounding gas. And being only visible from the southern hemisphere, this is a bit of a hidden gem that we think doesn't get talked about enough. Like the dragons, it's really not worth trying to observe visually, but for imagers, this is a beauty. In fact, it's actually a little brighter than the dragons, which means it works well even from light polluted skies, especially if you're using filters. You'll find the Prawn Nebula in the middle of the constellation Scorpius, and while it's visible from 6pm onwards, we recommend imaging it between 8.30 to 9.30pm when it's highest for the best detail. Now for something a little different and perhaps a little confusing. Introducing the False Comet Nebula, NGC 6231 which of course isn't a nebula and definitely isn't a comet. It's actually a dense young star cluster, but from a distance, especially through binoculars or with the naked eye from a dark sky, it really does look like a little comet streaking through Scorpio. It's bright, packed with stars, and very easy to find and observe, a fantastic visual target no matter what telescope you're using. Even city skies won't ruin this one. If you're under dark skies, however, look for a trail of faint stars extending out from the cluster. That's the comet tail, part of the illusion. You'll find the false comet nebula in the middle of the constellation Scorpius, and while it's visible from 6 p.m. onwards, we recommend checking it out between 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. And finally, we've saved the biggest and maybe the best object for last, the Milky Way itself. Now's the time when the bright core of our galaxy climbs high overhead in the evening sky, something only we in the southern hemisphere really get to experience. You don't need a telescope, in fact, this one might be best enjoyed without one, just by getting out somewhere dark and laying back and letting your eyes adjust. Binoculars are amazing here as well. You'll be able to pick out fine dust lanes, star clusters, and even nebulae all throughout the galactic arm. Astrophotographers, this is prime time. Grab a DSLR or mirrorless camera, a tripod, and a wide lens, ideally somewhere between 14 to 35 millimeters, and you're good to go. If you're in the Sydney area, check out our Bintel Wide Field Astrophotography Workshop, where we'll be helping wide field astrophotographers of all skill levels to take the best images of the Milky Way. Link in the description below. 
and that wraps up our guide for July. From our closest neighbour Alpha Centauri to dramatic nebulae, like the fighting dragons and the prawn, there's plenty to keep you busy this month. And don't forget the planets, there's five visible so you can really take your pick. Our last word of advice, whatever gear you're observing with this month, make sure to take a moment for the Milky Way, stretching bright and wide overhead like nowhere else in the world. No matter where you're observing from, we at Bintel wish you luck these crisp winter nights to enjoy all the wonders July has to offer.